I know it's a couple of days past due, but what the hell difference does it make? I mean, really, I'm going to get to as many of your questions as I can, since you guys did take the courtesy to ask them of me. So I thank you for that. Make sure if you've never done so before, you follow me on Twitter. So that way, when I ask for questions for future Q&As, we can do it. And then uh, subscribe to the channel. Smash that subscribe button and click the bell so you can get notified when I upload new videos. Assuming that'll even work, which it usually doesn't. All right, so I'm going to break this up into two parts because we had so many questions. I'm going to go ahead and get through part one. Um, this will be up sometime early Friday morning. And then part two will probably be up Friday afternoon or early evening. Metalhead674 is going to kick us off by asking, Don't know if you caught the fight on Saturday. If so... Would you want to see a match between Conor McGregor and Psycho Sid? Why would I want to see Psycho Sid waste his time with somebody like Conor McGregor? Psycho Sid can both beat his ass and bat clean up on my softball team. The fuck can Conor McGregor do? Fuck Conor McGregor. <laughs> Andreas underscore Byron. Any update on Summer? Great question. Um, she finished her last uh, chemo treatment. I think it was May 2nd or May 3rd, whatever it was. Um, had follow-up x-rays and ultrasounds the past couple of months. So far, everything is looking good. So she's in remission. With that said, you know, just have to continue to stay on top of it, stay vigilant. But uh, she is doing well. Uh, Probably post a picture of her sometime soon. Maybe we can start working her back in to talk about Roman Reigns a little bit. Um, maybe. But yeah, she's doing good. Thank you for asking. Guilt Trip 13. Has anyone told you that you look like James Bennett from Fatal Deviation? I had to look this one up when I saw this. And I see like the Wikipedia page describes it as one of the worst movies of all time. The budget for the movie was like less than $9,000. And I'm saying to myself, I can't believe I've never seen this movie. I want to see this Irish masterpiece. Please, please, please tell me how I can watch this. That said, I get that a little bit. But I don't, I don't know that much. I didn't think I looked that much like him. <laughs> History Guy 007. I'm a younger fan, born in 2000. I'm so sorry. Uh, from your perspective, you've been through some amazing eras like the Hogan era and the Attitude Era. When would you say the fun was gone from wrestling? Um, it depends on how you want to put it. As a product, it suck, and you can still have fun watching wrestling. That sounds stupid, but like 2010, 2011, there's a lot of shit going on in wrestling. And watching it with the guys back in Iowa, like, some of the most exciting times I ever had watching wrestling. I was watching the shows and then coming on YouTube and talking about them. Like, that shit was phenomenal. It was so much fun. Um, when did the fun really go? Uh, for me, it was probably once I moved out here to Virginia. Realistically, that's probably when it was. Uh, in terms of the product, like, a lot of the fun left the product many, many years ago. Asong Go Shuaku. Since you've often said that it was too late for Austin to put over Rock at WrestleMania 19, does this mean you would have preferred Rock to win at 17 with Austin closing his career out with the win at 19? Who said I would want Austin to close his career out with a win? No, I, my whole thing was just the way they always set it up. Like, Austin had to win at 15. He had to win at 17. And now you get to 19, and it's like it is too fucking late. It doesn't matter. It's like Austin's going to put over The Rock when it doesn't really do either one of them any damn good. Am I wrong? No, I'm not. Um, you know, got to turn Rock heel back at WrestleMania 17 if you're going to do any shit. Because he was going to be gone for a few months anyways. But I knew he was going to be gone. I knew they were in a situation where Austin had to win it. But yeah, it's just one of those things like, it was too late. I mean, I know why they did it, but at WrestleMania 19, who gave a shit? Uh, Just Alex Central. Thoughts on the China documentary that premiered on Vice TV? Also, in your opinion, what changes, if any, could have been done to save her life? Well, Alex, let's talk about this for a moment. Um, I know I watched, didn't they, they had the Dark Side of the Ring, right? And then, yes, I also watched the Vice documentary, the scuzzbag, the sleazeball manager, like, 
I was more par for the course of China bringing bad people into her life at bad times for her. Um, I mean, one change she could have made was to not do drugs. That's going to sound really asshole-ish, but it's true. Like, she might still be here if she would have stopped doing fucking drugs. And you can blame all the other people around her. You can blame everything else. But at the end of the day, there has to be, even with the trauma in her past and everything else, there has to be some level of individual accountability and responsibility. So, yeah, it sucks to think about it. Yeah, it sucks that she died so relatively young, and she did. But at the end of the day, she did it to herself. I can only expend but so much sympathy to somebody who did that. Like, one change would have been at some point in time, like, actually seeking out the help and meaning it and, and fighting harder. Like, two, you know, being better guarded about who you allow into your circle and who you allow into your life. Uh, yeah. So, and it's hard when you talk about China because there's, you can go a lot of different ways with that conversation. People around her did her dirty. You know, I've talked about that, Alex, over the years. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't give a shit what anybody wants to say. You want to blast me in the comments, flaming keyboard fingers of fire, folks? I don't care. Do whatever. Whatever makes you feel better. But at the end of the day, you have to be accountable for your own self, your own shit, your own actions. Nobody else. Sure, it's nice to have help and support and have quality people around you that lift you up instead of bring you get down. I, I agree with all of that. But let's, let's be realistic here. If you look at every single one of, this is for any of you, every single one of your failed relationships over the years, and we all have them, friendships, family, lovers, boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, whatever, partner. What's the one common theme? The one common theme in all of them. You. Now, some of that could be that you choose to associate with the wrong people. Some of that chooses to be this. Some of that chooses to be that. Not everything is necessarily your fault, but at the end of the day, what's the one common theme? It's you. So what can you do to take control? What can you do to take ownership over your plight, your situation, and your circumstances? Yeah, it fucking sucks that people around her betrayed her, but most importantly of all, she betrayed herself. She may not have known how to not do that, but that's, that's what happened. It sucks. I wish she was still around, but she's not. BPAS00, zero zero, do you think Big E has to win the Money in the Bank briefcase before he loses too much momentum and stalls out? Or can he survive being in the mid-card for months before getting a main event push on the road to WrestleMania? Great question. Um, we'll see what happens once we're back in front of fans. Really hard to gauge a lot of that without the, the live crowds and the fans there. In a month or two might be able to gauge and be like, hey, no, you can you can wait it out, or hey, no, you know what, you need to strike now. Um, or it might even been too late. WWE Galaxy, since the overall appeal of WWE is at an all-time low, what are three key things WWE should do over the next few months to cre- increase fans' interest? What are three key things? Like, number one, give a shit. Number two, give a shit. Number three, stop booking the shit for Vince McMahon. That's what it is. That's where you start. Sinner, 51190. Of the two feuds that can easily be considered Taker's best, which one did you enjoy more? The one against Kane or the one against Mankind and why? Um, I, I, Kane, the Kane feud obviously is the best because they had the most layers, they had the most story, went the longest period of time. I think the more important one was Mankind. The one that personally had me more interested was Mankind. Um, because Mankind came along at a really key part of Taker's career where he really needed somebody that could change the dynamics. He needed somebody that could get something different out of him. Um, You know, I might go with Mankind. Wrestling rants. With WWE having Wade Barrett back in the fold on NXT, any chance they could have him get back wrestling on the main roster? Do you think he could have a better second run? Similar to guys like Drew and Jinder? No. I wouldn't invest a lot in him because it just gets fucking hurt again. Michael Gavin Lee won. 
Do you think the brand extension of WWE has to end and should WWE cut Raw from three hours to two hours? Of course they should cut it from three hours to two hours, but you know, then you have to deal with the network at that point. You're talking about, you know, money that's already been paid out based off of the expectation of having a three hour show and now you're going to two hours, like it's a whole different thing. It's not quite so easy. Um, the brand extension in WWE have to end? Yeah, to some degree, but they won't. Alex Moreno 3, King of the Ring or Money in the Bank? It's a pay-per-view concept, King of the Ring. That's a pay-per-view concept, King of the Ring. Money in the Bank should be a special match, not a damn pay-per-view gimmick. James Isabel 20, would you rather have Chris Benoit babysit your least favorite family members during a roid rage crisis or have Dino Bravo deliver new ports to your house while he's on the run? B! Having Dino Bravo show up to give me new ports? Are you kidding me? The Marlboro Mafia chasing after him? Sign me up for that shit. It'd be fantastic. Especially why? Because Dino Bravo's dead. G Willsey01. I want to be exceptionally cheeky. Just watch your King of the Ring 2002 review. We'd love to see you review one of my favorite shows, Vengeance 2002. Would you be willing to? How is that exceptionally cheeky? Must be English. Um, sure, I'd be willing to. When I do another retro review, I will put it up to a vote. And for what, I can't remember which asshole it is that wants me to review that one year of Armageddon. You're going to have to wait till December. <laughs> then you can propose it. Rock Fools for Life. Do you think that Rock vs. Cena never been announced for 28 in the summer of Puck a bit booked correctly? The obvious main event for 28. Would it have been Cena vs. Punk for the WWE title? Hope you're doing great as well. Thank you. I'm doing pretty well. Hope the same for you, Rock Fools for Life. Um, probably. Probably. Ah, they fucked up so much about that, didn't they? God, that was terrible. Dalek of Chaos is going to close out this one by asking, Sasha Banks is being nominated for an Emmy for a role in The Mandalorian. Considering how much the WWE are media whores and wanted one themselves, how petty and bitter do you think they are that one of the stars they refuse to promote is being nominated for an Emmy? Now, you're going to have to forgive me here for a second. I'm not saying, Dallas, that I don't believe you. I'm going to look it up. So, as I put in the search here, Disney put Sasha Banks forward for an Emmy nomination uh, for her work on The Mandalorian. Says Sasha Banks is in the running for an Emmy award. She's in the final round of ballots. fascinating like as i'm looking through this now i'm trying to be confrontational here or pain in the ass like i legitimately didn't know which i think is the crux of the whole issue of the fucking point that you're talking about you literally have to go to dirt sheets and other sites that aren't like wwe to find out that sasha banks is being fucking considered for an emmy award To me, it's clear that they hate her. To me, it's clear that they're pissed off at the fact that she's going out there and doing big things. If you hate her so much, why did you let her have the belt for so long? If you hate her so much, why did you let her main event one of the nights of WrestleMania? None of this makes any fucking sense whatsoever. This is so petty and so childish. I'm not a big Sasha Banks fan, but how freaking ignorant do you have to be? This heifer... I don't mean that in a derogatory way it may sound, but this lady, excuse me, this lady is literally in the running for an Emmy Award for a show that millions of people are streaming and watching in The Mandalorian, and you're not hearing bupkis shack shit about it from WWE. Like, who the hell does that? So yeah, that's freaking petty, that's stupid, that's everything you could possibly say. Just flat out ignorant. Refusing to do it because they're mad because she went out there on her own and got that shit. And she's making it work for herself. And Vince can't stand that. Pathetic. Anyways, that's a great question to close us off. It's bad when I have to check online to even confirm that that's true. Because WWE did nothing to mention it! Anyways, 
That's it for this Q&A. Round two will be coming up later on Friday, so make sure you come back and check that out too.